greatest intro in the history of Jets content creation. Welcome to Armchair GM right here on the Talking Jets channel. I am Green Bean. That excited fella next to me is the now filled with power in his home, Tigo. Talking Jets with Tigo. Tigo, may I ask, how are you this evening, my friend? Doing great. Having a good time. Always excited about this show and getting to chat football with Jets YouTube legendary in, in, in you, Green Bean. So it's always a blast coming in and, and hanging out. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. I uh, I feel the same way. This is a unique show for me. Um, you know, where uh, you know, look, we haven't really we I, I had you on once and then you count you, you know, you called in a couple times, but we never really like worked together before. And it's interesting. I I I find your takes to be uh very different than than uh than I'm used to, and, and not not necessarily always different, but very passionately believe in the bullshit that you say which i appreciate you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> oh, i love it man uh it's good times everybody but you know what makes me most excited is the folks that show up in the chat are the folks that show up in the chat uh dakota uh reigning supreme yet again dakota we love you buddy uh jets are the defending champions of the offseason and doing a good job of defending their title you know what's funny about that comment though I didn't feel, I mean, look, we did get Aaron Rodgers last year and we did have hard knocks and there was a lot of hubbub, but it's so funny because I felt like last year was a departure from the way the Jets would approach. I thought last year was the year we needed to do it and we decided, eh, let's not do that anymore. So I think we're back, Dakota. I, I will, I will uh, raise the possibility that last year was the year we lost our throne and this year we're just merely reclaiming our championship buddy that's the way yep. but either way i love that you're here uh papa yeti checking in crazy bound aaron love our horses and defense yeah dude i'm with you dude matthias simon my old buddy coming in good to see you matt we got to get to a game this year man uh tony alexio maybe me and you matt we'll go to london how's that sound if the jets go to london for sure which it's looking like me and uh, matthias simon oh i got that all right so we'll uh we'll hang out with phil adams in london buddy that'll be good nick rousseau is here uh aunt jets is back uh good to see you man uh infrared our buddy harry is here if I uh, hear any more mock drafts and let's pick Bowers to the Jets at 10, I'm going to block them. <laughs> I know. And no matter, even if you, I had somebody tell me, what was it? What's today? Wednesday, but I think Monday or something like, dude, I like Bowers and that's the guy I want. And I'm sick of it. I'm fucking sick of it. I'm sick of you. I hear you. Cause you know, what's the, like, I look at the up until like right around now, when I start really looking at my guys, I'm going to make some claims, right? I'm going to go, all right, here's the guy. Up until this point, my whole draft period, Tico, is exploring scenarios. People get locked in early, and then they just spend the two months or so defending it. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't resonate with that. I want to learn. I, I vacillate from position to position, from player to player. I go, oh, I didn't even know this about. Holy shit, I found a guy. It moved my guy off the perch. You know what I mean? That kind of a thing, you know? Do you yeah, agree? My, my list is changing constantly. There are players that, like, I become big fan of early on in the process, and it's just like, there's no way the Jets are going to take this guy, but I'm still a big fan of him and, like, those things like that. We had a little skiffle about one of them and, like, Chris Jenkins. I love Chris yeah, Jenkins. Yeah. He's he's awesome, and I we're not getting him, but he's awesome. And it was Puka Nakua last year. I was all in on Puka, and I was like, "Do we need a wide receiver? We should take Puka late." Um, you find these players that you just become big fans of, and then you just. But I'm never so to the point to where it's just like it's this player or else, or I die. This is the hill I die on. Ah, it's just like, come yeah, on, yeah. relax. Well, you know what's interesting about you bringing that up? With our show today, guys, we have a deconstruction uh, of the Antigo I might differ in opinion on uh, free agency. So free agency is not over. People just feel like it is. We're only talking about the draft. Uh, and it is technically a quiet time. But the truth is, is that it's not over. So Tigo and I are going to look at a few of the free agents, uh, some positions that the Jets uh, still need, look at a few options and discuss whether or not excuse me, if uh, we should sign them before the draft 
And then hopefully we'll get to taking a look at some of our own guys that are out there. Are we still aware of who's out there? Who got signed? Who's still there? And should we consider bringing them back? And th if some of that takes place, buddy, maybe just maybe Chris Jenkins is on the order. You know, who oh, knows? Yeah. Wouldn't that if we be can something? if if we can manufacture that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, uh, Alfonso's here. Alan Dodes is here. Bradigan's in the house. Ryder and Talon's pot. You guys are the absolute best. <clears throat> I got something in my throat, guys. Forgive me. Um, So here we go. Before we get started, I would like to say, oh, Fat Gandalf likes Chris Jenkins. He likes the old Chris Jenkins. Uh, so I would like to say, guys, before we really get rolling, if you'd be so kind as to smash those milk thumbs, hit the old like button for us. It is greatly appreciated. If you have not subscribed to the Talking Jets channel, that is also greatly appreciated. And don't forget to support Tigo's channel. <coughs> I'm dying, Tigo. I don't know what it is. I can't shake it. Um, but let's take that. He's got his Gatorade. I got to take a sip of something, everybody. I don't know what I think. I think I'm, I, I, I don't know. I might be uh, on the Went way down out. the wrong pipe. I can't cough it out. Um, anywho, we'll see how it goes. Project prospect with Dom C in the house, everybody. So look, we have, uh, the idea right now <laughs> is that the, um, we're heading into the draft. As of tomorrow, Tigo, we have 14 days. So this is where it gets serious. You got to stop playing games. You really like this friggin' Brock Bowers. Is that what you really want? Is you, you know, you're you thinking tackle, uh, whatever it might be, is the receiver that you have a crush on. Is that really the guy? We got to start looking at this stuff because we're all gonna make our claims <coughs> and people are gonna screenshot our stuff and tell us about it next year when we're right or wrong, Tigo. That's okay. Yep. So there are still positions of need. Tigo, just humor me and then agree or disagree. The way I look at it is defensively, we have one need. Need. Now, not that we can't fluff things up. I'm a mess, guys. I'm an absolute mess. I, I don't know what's happening. I feel disoriented all of a sudden. <laughs> the one need on defense is safety. Yep. That's the one that even with we have two guys there. We have Chuck Clark and we have Tony Adams, really. Um, both, in my opinion, still kind of question marks. Tony Adams looked pretty good. I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm a fan. I'm, I'm supportive. But there should be competition for him. He shouldn't be the uh, the sole owner of, of, a, of a role on a roster spot right now. Chuck Clark, while we're all excited, number one, he's limited. But number two is he's coming off a season-ending injury. And the truth is he's never been injured. And it's, we don't know how the hell this guy's going to come back from injury. We don't know. He's a year older, the whole thing. So... I'm confident to a degree, but it is a hole. Because even for depth, there's really nobody behind him. We have, or them, we have J uh, Jarek Bernard Converse, uh, cornerback to safety convert, played some safety in college, so it's not, it's not foreign or anything. But still a big, big question mark. Had injury concerns last year, or issues, I should say. But that's our need. We have a need for safety on the defensive side. Now, on the offensive side of the ball, guys, running back is, I mean, we have, we have Brees Hall, we have Izzy Abanacanda, and then we have two guys that nobody's ever heard of, Zach Zavian Valade and another fella. Jaquise Patrick. Yeah. Now, I mean, look, as nice as uh, I'm sure that fella is. Probably uh, Jacques, if I'm being honest. What's that? His name is probably Jacques Patrick, right? Well, Jacques. Yeah, I mean, and, and look, you tell me how many Jacques make it in the NFL, and then we'll start talking about that guy, okay? <laughs> Um, I mean, and okay, you know, it's, a name is a name, but still, you know, it kind of says some things about where you come from and everything else. So uh, I, I prefer like you know, uh, guys with Polynesian last names, and you know what I mean. That, there's, there's something, yeah, 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 yeah. Something there, Tigo. Get me, get me a guy whose last name has letters that aren't spelled in there. Fuanga, you know what I mean? Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. Penny Sewell, like, get me uh, those kinds of guys. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, Alan says, I'm allergic to Bowers. That's what's going on. Get me an EpiPen, buddy. I feel like I might be coming out of it. Uh, so uh, we'll see. It's hard to keep going when you just want to sit and cough for five minutes. Uh, but so we have our need at running back. Now, not starting running back, and that's nice, but still a need nonetheless. Wide receiver is a need, uh, from my opinion. Now, Garrett Wilson's an absolute stud. I think he's a bona fide one. I don't have to worry about that. Mike Williams is an amazing number two. But guess what? He's not going to be ready for training camp. He's missed 18 games the last two years. Again, year older. 
Uh, Chargers felt it uh, okay to get rid of him. Granted, there was money things and all that too. But that he's not even going to be ready for training camp, Tigo. So, yep. you know, he, this guy, we don't know what this is. You know, he I might think not be ready play. till week four. Right. So what are we doing there? Now, behind him, we have Al Alan Lazard, who, again, I maintain that he's going to be better with Aaron Rodgers. We know that because we have four years of Aaron Rodgers, one year without significantly different experiences. Uh, so that's fine, but still not the guy that I want to go. No, we're good. Yep. Gibson is behind him. Uh, has his talents, has his moments, but uh, lots and lots of question marks. And we can absolutely upgrade over an Xavier Gibson. And then there's Jason Brownlee and Irv Charles and those guys. Irv Charles is going to make the roster for special teams. Brownlee, I mean, all right, you know, I don't know, but we can upgrade. Uh, so wide receivers in need. Offensive line, we've done some fantastic work in free agency. Uh, injuries, depth, development, one-year contracts, all those things still a need now would you present a different one would do you see it otherwise do you disagree with me in any any case before we move on um not the only one that i would throw in there is not a need not a need but i would like another body in there would be the interior defensive line i'm not sold on leaky photo you know, oh. I know that Kinlaw's not going anywhere and we brought Solly Thomas back and all that stuff. But like, I'd like another name in that room. Like you said about safety, I would like another name in there because I don't think any job should be given to anybody. I think if, if Lecky wants to make the roster, if any of that, we should be pushing the bottom of our roster, because if they're pushing the top end of our roster is going to push as well. And it's just that everybody should be fighting for a spot, but no, I think you nailed all of the spots that are probably needs to be filled. Right. And, and I don't disagree with you. You know, I, I mean, I, I do somewhat on leaky photo. Um, I know his name's lecky Fatu, I think, but leaky photo it is for me. Um, I think that they signed him for a reason. I think he's going to play about uh, 20 to 25 percent max of the snaps. He's he, he's the Al Woods replacement. I'm I feel pretty oh, yeah. good about him there. But uh, but I hear you. I don't disagree. So guys, let's start with safety. So here is the safeties that are left on the market. Okay. So we have Jamal Adams. You know, I don't think we need to talk too much about that. I mean, you know, if there was a world where you were, you you know, everybody's hurt and he's the only guy out there, then that's the type of scenario that it would take to bring him back. Uh, Justin Simmons, a name that's pretty popular. Uh, Eddie Jackson, uh, Quandre Diggs. Just a couple of years ago, these were among, well, Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs were the two highest paid safeties in the NFL just two years ago. Uh, Justin Simmons, also a moneymaker. Micah Hyde's out there. Uh, Marcus May, a name that we know, uh, and on and on and on. I mean, are there any names here that you think would be good fits for the Jets? Let's start with that, Tigo. I think there – it is – yeah, there's a ton of them, right? Like I, Justin Simmons, and I would I would still take Quandre Diggs even at 31 years old, and uh, Micah Hyde, I would still take him at 34 years old and and things like that, but it's – are the Jets in a spot where they would pay and invest all of that money at safety when we've seen that historically they don't? And that's my biggest concern because I think you're right. They definitely need somebody. I just don't know if they're going to do anything. And that's the well, thing that scares that, me. Well, that's not entirely true. So you bring up Micah Hyde. They're saying his market values any, you know, in the $3.7 million range. Now, this is just their take on it. Justin Simmons, on the other hand, is an 11.1. And I think that applies to what you're saying. You know, 11, are they going to spend $11 million? Now, real quick, before we get back to this, let's take a look at what the Jets gave Jordan Whitehead. So uh wait hold on uh career let me see here so the jets gave him uh look we paid him six million the first year or 7.235 million in five so a 3.7 you know five million dollars i mean joe douglas granted didn't break the bank but seven million isn't a paltry number for a safety 
And uh, I think, you know, the idea that Joe Douglas doesn't value the position, I think can be argued, especially when you compare it to how many cornerbacks he's drafted and how he's paying the cornerbacks. Uh, but, you know, as you know, compared to, but he did use a third round pick on his safety. He used a fourth round pick on Pinnock, who with the intention was to make him a safety. So a third and fourth round pick on safeties. Uh, Jarek Bernard Converse, I believe, was a sixth yep. round pick. Um, so it's not that any played Jordan Whitehead seven million dollars. So it's not that he he's you know he's just not breaking the bank for it or using his first two rounds, but he has used a third, a fourth, a sixth on safety, and he's used obviously seven million dollars. So especially now with that being a hole, it could be the year that we see him go back to that because when he signed Jordan Whitehead, it was a need for us. We all wanted Marcus Williams. He was the big money, I believe. He got twelve million, if I remember correctly. But um, anyway, so the idea that Joe Douglas won't, I think, is a little bit overblown. I I think he just does it when he needs to. He's not looking to to go and uh, be pay the highest paid safety or use a first round pick on a safety or anything like that. But what I meant more along the lines is a guy that's going to move the needle at the safety room is not. That's what I mean. Like Justin Simmons is the guy that objectively we should be in on because he would be the single best upgrade at the safety position that we could do in the off season. If, if, if I'm, if we're probably being objective, right? He's the best guy left. That being said, he's probably outside of the market where, Joe would feel comfortable making that contract. And I think that we're more in the likelihood to bring in or even draft a guy right in the later rounds. But I think we're more likely to bring in one of these, you know, DeAndre Houston Carson from the Texans last year or Ryan Neal from the Bucks or um, Kareem Jackson from the Texans and or, or Jaron Curse. Like these aren't, upgrades in in any way shape or form but they could be depth have, but their depth and that's my thing is is like that's fine if you want to spend two million dollars to get a, a safety we definitely need it but it's but not let me ask you this if needle. we're let's say we're shooting for depth and i put a poll in the in the uh, chat for you guys uh let us know what you think on that one but let's say the jets would like to bring in is like and we're just talking about safety for the moment but do you think Let's say they have their eye on Justin Simmons. And like people saying we have two million. Dude, we started free agency with four million and look what we did with that. We can we probably have four or five players on deck ready to renegotiate and or extend um as we need it. We saw CJ Mosley. Uh we we did that one, made it from 21 and change this year to 17.25 over two years. Um, and all of a sudden we got Tyron Smith right after it. So I think Joe Douglas is is kind of doing that as is needed. If he doesn't need it, he's not going to do it. So I'm not really worried about that. I see Ron Weiss has a uh, a comment. A couple other guys have a comment about the money. That's not my concern. But let's say they have their eye on Justin Simmons, just for argument's sake, and they plan on signing him. Do you think it's advantageous to sign him before the draft or after the draft, Tigo? Would it make sense to sign a Justin Simmons before the draft. Yes. Because then you could theoretically eliminate the need for safety in the draft. Right? If you can if you can remove positions from your list of things that you need to draft, it opens up the board a lot because now you can start doing different things and start moving around and safety is a position that would be very easily, hey, we could just eliminate safety from the from the class. And now instead of having to take a safety, we can have the luxury of taking a corner. That's how they're going to have to think right in that kind of domain. There is a benefit of signing Simmons now versus later. The, the concern would be if you wait and you go after the draft and you don't get a safety in the draft and your roster has three spots, and he's the only guy you're interested in, he can hold you over a barrel. That's right. That's an interesting point. Now, the other side to that is, 
if we do sign a safety right now, number one, it could show exactly what our hand is. Like we only have, we take one need off the board. It could, especially in the top three rounds. So let's, uh, you know, even right now we have a first and a third, but let's, you know, we could even potentially get a second. So let's just assume for argument's sake that we have a first, a second and a third where we're trying to find a way to get the best players. And up the, in those rounds, people are trading all over the place uh, yeah. to try to get up uh, to the player that they want. They don't want to lose them. They're almost there. And I can, I can send a fourth and get the guy I want, that sort of thing. It could, number one, show our hand, okay? So when we're sitting there, people are like, I know I got to jump the Jets if I want Cam Kitchens or whoever. You know what I mean? They, they, they I, got, I know I got to jump the Jets. If you sign a safety, then we start number one. It, 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 like you said, though, it takes our need away, and it's but it starts to show our hand on what it is that we're going to do. We only need running back, tackle, and wide receiver. So teams are going to know whether or not they need to jump us for one of those guys. And if a Malachi Corley or Malik Washington or whoever it is, Ricky Pierce, all in the second, one of those guys is, is almost there. A team like we saw last year with Brock Bowers, whether that was their guy or not, from our uh, standpoint out here. Uh, as fans, we were all looking at Brock Bowers. It came right to the edge of our pick, and we and it got stolen from us. And I think he would have been pretty helpful last year, Tigo. I think that would have been a Broderick a, Jones. What'd I say? Brock Bowers. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. It's thank infested. You it's infested your brain. <laughs> thank you for catching that, man. Don't ever be afraid to 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 snatch the truth out of my out of my gullet. Yeah, thank you. That was a nice correction for a little slip there. Broderick Jones, everybody. So, and the other thing is this, is that when you, right now, there's an interesting thing that you can do, and we'll move into the wide receiver after this, and, and, and there's, a, there's a couple names there that we could talk about this with, and this is something that when you look at the draft class coming in, and guys who might have thought their free agent market was a little bit more robust than maybe they're seeing, they, they have, an, like uh, Justin Simmons says, 11.1 11 million, 11 .1 million, that's my market value, that's what I want, I'm not bending but nobody's nobody's playing ball and then we inch closer to the draft and there are 20 safeties that are going to come into the league and, and and have the ability to compete for starting jobs all of a sudden that shit gets very very real and wait a minute where am i going to play and then yes you can wait for injuries and all that kind of stuff but where am i going to play the idea of you know saying hey look you call them and you go look you know we were interested we reached out to you before we can't pay the 11 we're going to take a safety in the draft and uh, and we'll be off the market, but we wanted to reach out to you one more time. We got 8 million for you. That kind of a thing. And I the, will say this to just yeah. counter that is that would work like a hundred percent on a guy like Terrell Edmonds, right? The safety out of Tennessee. If, if, if you're, if that's like, that's a guy that I'd be interested in. Like legitimately you, you bring him in before the draft. But I think a guy who's been as historically good as Terrell Edmonds is going to bank, not Terrell Edmonds, I'm sorry, uh, as Justin Simmons is going to just bank on his name carrying him, right? It's the whole what happened to Odell Beckham last year. He was in no rush to sign because he knew that the, the name on the back of the jersey was going to carry him. In, he was going to find a job. He was going to get paid. It didn't matter that he was hurt and recovering. He didn't have to worry. To go, to He didn't have to panic before the draft. A guy like, you know, Edmonds, however, who is who doesn't have that name to carry him, might be in that situation to panic. Simmons, however, is not a guy that I think is going to panic because he's just like, well, I'm Justin Simmons. I'm the I'm I'm the best guy left. And if I wait until after the draft and they don't get a safety, this team is screwed and that 11.1 market value That's a bet, but that's a bet that's gambling, right? I hear you. And I if you're you. Justin Simmons, you make that bet. Mm. If you're Terrell Edmonds, you don't. If you're that's Simmons, you do. That's a good point. It is. That's a that's a solid point. I don't know if they're willing to do that. I hear you with a name like Justin Simmons, uh, but I don't know if he'd be. It, it'd be real nice to make sure you get on a team that's you know a, a, a good defensive team and say, okay, well, look, I have a, a top defense. I'm the final piece in a top defense, reaching out, or I can hang out and I'll be playing for the 
the newly sucked Patriots or Bills or whatever. Um, you know, anyway, I think there could be an argument. There's an argument for either side. Your point about the name on the jersey is strong and betting on myself, so to speak. But that could blow up on him, too, and he can end totally up. Totally can. Yeah, he can end up in a whole different situation. Let's take a look at the wide receivers. And there's an interesting name that's still here, but a couple guys. Uh, look at these guys. You know, just a couple years ago, some of them were the most sought, off, sought after. But, you know, guys like Hunter Renfro, uh, Allen Robinson, who has just, I mean, what a Falling steep fall from grace. Planet. I mean, it's really something. I thought when he went to the Rams, like, oh, my God, this guy's going to light it up with Stafford. thought the league Didn't was over. What's that? I thought the I thought the season was over when he went there. I thought him with Stafford and Cooper Cup, like I thought yeah. the, the season was over. Yeah, I did too, and it just didn't work out that way. And and OBJ, I was like, dude, this is going to be nuts. Um, well, OBJ was signed a little bit later, but anyway, the point I agree with you. I thought the same thing. Um, so, but look, so we got Hunter Renfrew. Here, let me let me enlarge this a little bit for everybody. Here we go. So we got Hunter Renfrew. Uh, OBJ is still out there. Alan Robinson, as we mentioned. Michael Gallup is still out there. Only 28 years old. Uh, Tyler Boyd is, wait. Let me see. Yeah, Tyler Boyd. Holy shit, I was thinking, wait, I'm looking at my. Anyway, I confused it for a second. I'm broken tonight, Tigo. Mm -hmm. So Tyler Boyd is still out there at 29 years old. His market value uh, Tigo, let's see what that I but it's 8.7 million dollars, and I'm sure that the reason he's not signed is he's sticking to that somewhere around that range. He's saying yeah. nope, nine million, and people are saying uh, no, you know, it's just not what we're willing to pay. You're going to be our wide receiver two or three, uh, just like you were in Cincinnati. Now, I maintain that he's an excellent wide receiver two or three, totally agree. At this point, let's just focus on him, and there, but there are other guys. Of course, DJ Sharks, one we were talking about. Uh, Michael Thomas. No, you know, good. These some of these guys are older, but uh, Michael Harmon's going to be out there. I'd be, I'm going to tell you this. I think Michael Harmon's going to have a hard time finding. He's a job. done. I don't think he's going to find a job after all of the stuff that came out, and he's yeah. a liability to any team. Yeah, people don't want to buy into it, and he didn't do anything. He ended up catching that amazing, you know, moment in the Super Bowl hero but you know that wasn't anything they're really not gonna easy. that's not gonna trick an nfl team into to giving you money right i agree so let's look at tyler boyd 8.7 million is what is what he's looking at right now he's holding to it is that the kind of guy that the jets could call and say hey look we're heading into the draft this is an incredibly deep wide receiver class uh, I mean, you can go into the fourth round and find starters. Maybe not wide receiver one out of the gate, of course, no. but you're going to find guys that can slide right into that wide receiver three spot and have no problem contributing to the team. Uh, maybe even wide receiver two in some instances. Can you call a Tyler Boyd and and say very something very similar? Like, look, dude, you know, we we were talking to you before. You're at nine million. You know, we can't do that, but. I tell you what I can do. I can do 4.8 for you uh, for one year. I'll give you some incentives uh, to get you up to six uh, if you do X, Y, and Z. And uh, play for us for one year and let's see how it goes. Would that be the kind of guy that you think would bite, number one? Not that we know him personally or anything, but do you think that would be the kind of guy that you take that kind of shot with going into a strong wide receiver class? How do you see that one? I think you do. I don't think he bites. If I'm being honest, I think, I think, I think just that as like, like just as a man kind of a thing, like he was wide receiver two. chase came in and he became an afterthought and he was very good still. And he like, it, it was the Jamar chase and T Higgins show. And people kind of really started to forget about Boyd and just how good he is. And, operating as a big slot. And I think that might be one of those ego things that comes to bite him in the butt. A little bit later is the fact of like, no, I'm a $9 million receiver. I'm going to get my 9 million. And he might just wait. He, he, I think it's a bad move. I think that there are teams that would sign him right now. I think the Baltimore Ravens would be silly. The, the fact that he's not a Raven at this point 
blows my mind. That makes no sense to me how him and Baltimore haven't been able to figure it out why he's not in Baltimore. But like, I just don't think he bites. I think DJ Chark, he would bite. If you go to DJ Chark and be like, look, DJ Chark, yeah. Look, I know you think you're a five million dollar wide receiver. That's what you got last year or whatever it is. And and look and at that. Ten? Now that that doesn't say ten to me, Tigo. That says eleven, buddy. Ele- I saw the first two and I yeah, yeah you're right. That's eleven. <laughs> eleven? In what my whole thing goes out the window. I was gonna say, I'm like, you want you want three and a half, four to come to the team, you know? Like, yeah, and like, look, I mean, and this is just look. Last year, just to for example, they they hit on a couple. They were very close on some, but like last year, for example, oh, Connor McGovern. They had Connor McGovern as twelve million last year. As we know, we got him for slightly less than that. Just a little bit though, <laughs> just like a unicorn's eyelash less than twelve. Yeah, we got 10% uh, of that deal uh, done with Connor McGovern. So this is just, uh, you know, it's just a, uh, you know, a talking point really, but but they they do give you a good idea a lot of the time. But yeah, oh, so Kevin. Now, but would uh, speaking of DJ Shark, would you like him? Yeah. I think you need depth. I think like the thing is is like Xavier Gibson and Jason that? Brownlee are great stories and like nothing in the statistics points to $11 million. Yeah. I mean, 66 targets, 35 receptions, 525. He played 15 games. Are they paying uh, him off of the 2019 year? Like make it make yeah, sense. Clearly. Yeah. Make it I mean, make sense. And even that, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. But uh, let's see five touchdowns, two fumbles, five drops. So I don't, yeah, that ain't, Make it make sense. So I think your 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 five million dollar number, and that's a guy that you could say, hey, look, you know, you're going to be the odd man out, dude. We got forty wide receivers coming into the NFL this year, and there are still guys like Tyler Boyd, and OBJ, and the rest out there. We'll we'll give you three point six. Come on, come on, and be our wide receiver four. You know what I mean? That kind of a thing. Wide receiver three, wide receiver four. I think he'd be fantastic in that role, quite frankly. I I agree, especially with these new kickoff rules. A guy with that kind of speed would be so so interesting to me. Like, and again, it's it's just the the idea isn't the idea is is that I don't think I I would I I want to find wide receiver two in the draft. That's the way that I look at it. So all of my thought process is how can I make Alan Lazard wide receiver five when Mike Williams comes in. Who can push Lazard? That's who I want. Yeah. Who's right. the guy who's going to make sure that he's not kicking soccer balls before the game, but he's sitting in front of a Judd's machine? Because Jason Brownlee and Xavier Gibson weren't going to keep him up at night, and nor should they. They were undrafted free agents with a lot of holes in their game. He had nobody pushing for his roster spot, not a single person. There was no competition in the wide receiver room. And like you said before, it's all about competition in the wide receiver room. Yeah, we signed Mike Williams. I don't care. Bring in another wide receiver, too, to make Mike Williams play better and the new wide receiver, too, to play better. Alan Lazard wants to just dress on Sundays, just period. He just wants to put on his pads. Cool. You're going to have to compete with another guy that we're bringing in, and a guy like DJ Chark fits the bill of that. You know, and you could argue, say, okay, you bring in Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd's going to be the one that's going to push Mike Williams and those two guys. And then in the draft, you get the guy who pushes, um, you know, Alan Lazard and so on and so forth. But that's what I, that's specifically with the wide receiver room. I would like to get a higher upside wide receiver um, in the draft because I want somebody young, cost controlled that we can. Well, you just found a way to justify your heart. That's what you did. There. No, that absolutely. Was, that's that was pretty good. That was well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it caught it. Long, but it's, uh, I appreciate a short walk it. of water for me to say, Brock, uh, not Brock Bowers. Jesus Roman, Christ, he's on our mind. Brian Romo Dunze at ten. That's what I was doing. There. Now, if Roman, Roman, and Brian are on the on the board, you would choose Romo Dunze over your boy. I yeah, I would choose yeah. Romo. Okay, Brock. good, good. I'm I all right. Good. I was gonna lose a, a smidgen. No, no, no. I love Brock, like, and I think he's great. But Brock is a perfect like. Trade out of 10, maybe to like 15 and get no, I meant Brian Thomas. Oh, no. I love Brian Thomas. It it goes yeah. Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas. If Whichever one is on the board, Got pick it. the highest version. 
All right, good. Because Tigo, yeah. look, you know, Tigo, I bust your balls, but I respect you immensely. So, but I also know that you love Brian Thomas and you do fall in love with your guys. And I didn't know if, you know, you Romo Dunze, in my opinion, is a superior, at least prospect. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Brian Thomas. So I just um, don't think he's going to get to 10. He That's might not, dude. I That's think he's taking to the Bears. I know all this bullshit about, you know, whatever. I think Romo Dunze is the Bears pick. That's, I mean, bringing on Caleb Williams and Romo Dunze to that team, it just it speaks so loud and proud to what they're trying to accomplish, think, and it's an amazing opportunity. I think they should do it. I think Eberflus, as a defensive head coach, is going to say, we got you, DJ Moore. We got you, Keenan Allen. You have Cole Komet. You have a running game. You have a solid offensive line in front of you. We brought a new offensive coordinator who is purposely picked for your skill set. I need to make this defense be able to stop a nosebleed. Ooh, that's a good point. And I don't I like it, that. If you're too. staring down the yeah. barrel of Dallas Turner and or Jared Verse, I don't know how you pass that up as a defensive head coach whose job is on the line. Like, you know what I mean? The same thing works the other way. You're, you're a defensive head coach whose job is on the line. Make sure that offense works. Go and get Romo Dunze. Totally see that option too. But I just think a defensive head coach, like, do I felt I love Jared Verse. So, so oh, much. Yeah, how do you not? Like, so, yeah. so much. And it sucks that uh, it's great that we don't need a defensive end for the first time in forever. It's right? really something. I know. It's a, it's a luxury. Imagine that. That's what. And look, you got to credit Joe Douglas and Robert Sala for that, man. I mean, like, forever, for oh, for a decade, we just, we did not have it. Nothing. And it's a shame. Nothing. And oh, now we're quick. overflowing with one. Seriously. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, Jake checking in. He says, Joe Douglas. Thank you, Jake. He says, uh, Joe Douglas literally don't care on safety. He's not bluffing on negotiations. Well, I don't think we're talking about bluffing on negotiations. I think just straight up saying like, hey, dude, here we are. We're going into the draft. Yeah. Uh, we got our eyes on some, you know, if there's a safety that's in the spot, we're we're looking to take one if it's the right guy. Uh, and there are so many coming into the league. I mean, dude, you look, look real quick. Look at all the safeties that are, that are, that have been signed. I mean, it's hold on. Yeah. So look at all these guys. So look, look at all the safeties that were signed, right? The giants to green Bay, Detroit to Philly, green Bay to Jacksonville, Miami to Denver. There's a lot of guys that were signed. Oh yeah. And there's a lot of guys coming in and then here you are. You're part of the crew that's still out there. So it's an opportunity is what we're really talking about, Jake. And if the opportunity presented itself, is it a good idea to sign one of these guys pre-draft as opposed to waiting till after and see what, what falls to you? There's arguments for both sides. We're just trying to flesh, out at, flesh that out a little bit. And then, Jake, I'll give you this too. Don't yell at me about Boyd. I'm just using him as an example. Yes, I would love to add Tyler Boyd. But in the event it was DJ Chark or or Tyler Boyd, for example, <laughs> or like, uh, you know, Hunter, Hunter Renfro. Renfro. You know, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, there, there's quite a few guys here that I would be okay. Because like, in my opinion, what we're looking for is wide receiver 3AB. You know, three or four, that's what we're looking for. And I would love to be able to bring one of those guys in because here's my concern, Jake, is that Mike Williams, who, again, I've chosen to accept. I like the swing. I think, look, the season's long. If we he misses a couple of games in, in, in the beginning, we want him to be there for the larger portion of the season, make sure he's healthy. I'm in. Like, if that guy's on the field, he and Garrett Wilson are the best one, two that we've had since Brandon Marshall and, and Eric Decker without question in my mind. Right. I mean, Perfect. if you can pull, pull out a fucking better one, two punch. I mean, I know Chris Hogan and, and Dante Moncrief were real strong for a second there, but uh, you know, but I, I, who, who have we had? So, I mean, Corey Davis and, and Garrett Wilson could have been argued, you know what I mean? But Corey Davis, you know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's ar it's arguable, but I think Mike Williams and Corey Davis are better. I'm sorry, and Garrett Wilson are better than uh, than the than the other. So adding a Tyler Boyd, adding a DJ Chark to that mix, even pre draft, to me makes a boatload of sense. Uh, you know, or if you're going to wait till after, but at, before the season going in, because if Mike Williams does miss the first four games, limiting limiting Aaron Rodgers 
weapons, you know, that are allotted to him or available to him, to me makes no sense, Tigo. It just makes no sense. Why struggle through those games with the idea that, oh, we're going to get this guy back, and then getting him back is no guarantee. He's missed 18 games over the past two years, everybody. And, you know, even though it was better before that, he still missed a game here, two games there, a game here. So he's never, I think he has one full season. So it's just a, it's a, it's a concern. So bringing in, let's, for, for Jake, let's say DJ Chark. Okay, DJ Chark. Well, I still prefer Tyler Boyd, Jake, to be honest with you. But it's DJ Chark, and uh, and then we draft our guy in the third round, whether whoever is there. You know what I mean? Uh, you know whether Corley makes it, Mal- uh, Malik Washington's there. There, you know, there's still the opportunity that a Leggett or a Worthy uh, can be there, and, th- and there's lots of fun names uh, that'll be there in that range. So. Um, that to me is a wide receiver core. Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, uh, DJ Chark, Alan Lazard, and Malachi Corley. Now we're talking, buddy. You know what I mean? Instead of Xavier Gibson, Jason Brownlee, and Irv Charles. See what I mean? And, Ra- and, Ra- and uh, Reg- Randall Cobb. Like, holy cow, can we do better? So that's kind of what we're talking about here. Preaching to the choir. Uh, I know Papa Yeti too. Are we really talking about boy? Well, you know, it's the Green Bean Show, Papa Yeti. You know, I of course, bring of course. I haven't, I, now, in my defense, I haven't brought up Tyler Boyd in weeks. <laughs> All right, weeks. Mike everybody. Williams has only completed a season once, and it was in 2021. Correct. And no, look, tell me, tell me no. before that. Was it 17 games in 21? It was 17 games in 21. He has never. Uh, the only time he has completed an, a, an entire season was in 2018. So, right. That's what I was saying. So one, one it's season, one, yeah. but, but then now in his defense, it was only like one game in 2019 and 2020, he missed one game in 2021. He missed one game in 2022. He missed four games. And then his rookie year, he missed seven games. Yeah. So 2022 was four games. Twenty and then last year was, was right. Like the whole, yeah. 15 games or 14 games. I think it was right. Um, Alan Doge checking in. He says, see, you guys both have Brock Bowers brain disease. Draft O-line round one, wide receiver with our next pick. Wherever it ends up being, deepest spot in the draft. Alan, I'm going to shoot real straight with you. That's that's how I see it. That's how I see it. Um, now, like Tigo said, if a Romo Dunze is there, and you know I mean, and you feel like, hey, we are still going to draft a tackle, and we feel like there's still going to be some guys that, you know, if we make it to six games, they're going to be ready to roll if we need them for a couple of weeks or whatever. Then you can argue that point, but I think the drop off is significant at offensive tackle, especially for guys that can contribute this year is what I'm really talking about. Um, you know, uh, we're wide receiver. They can contribute because again, we're not looking for wide receiver one per se, you know, per se, everybody. And the same to- argument could be said about wide receiver. In the in the reverse, I think if you're you should be looking for an impact player week one, you're looking for a guy to hold the boat if Smith goes down, and I think I think we have that in Carter Warren. I think Carter Warren can steady the ship for four to five games. Where if Garrett goes down and Mike Williams, like who is also injury prone, goes down, Alan Lazard is wide receiver one, filled in by undrafted free agents at the rest of the thing. That scares me a whole lot more than four games. And I'm a, everyone knock on all of the wood and all that stuff. Garrett's going to wrap him in bubble wrap. But if, if Garrett goes down, there's, you have no receiving threat. You have not a single person with hands on in your wide receiver core that you can truly, truly depend on. And yeah, I think this wide receiver class is super deep and you're totally right. You can get a wide receiver three or four in the third of the fourth round, but that guy now immediately becomes wide receiver one. If, in, if, if, if the, the bad thing happens and that's my, that's my concern. I think last year, the biggest problem was the quarterback and people aren't admitting that. Oh, Zach I admit it. Get the ball out. You know, yeah. he had average 
time of protection when you look at the advanced stats. Even though it was porous, we were not the worst offensive line in the in the NFL. No, he had and two like and a half said, seconds. He had two and a half seconds, man. And now, Aaron Rodgers every play and the Miami yeah, game, you course. you you see those those snapshots come out a lot when the, the entire offensive line was behind the uh, yeah. Team. It's great. That it's game four was, guys it's, right in front of Zach. Yeah. Immediately. And, and all of his offensive linemen fucking making hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. they're all just fist yeah. pumping each other. Ha, good uh, job. Zach got killed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so that game was particularly bad. And there were others that were worse. You know, Dallas comes to mind. Dallas was just owning us up front with Dwayne Brown and Uzoma's inability to do anything. Um, but the point remains. I mean, the the real weakness on this team the past bunch of years has been quarterback oh. position. And while still acknowledging, you know, uh, the offensive line and maybe even, you know, not the greatest weapons in the world and all that, it's all about the quarterback. You know, we talked about Mike LaFleur a lot. Um, he schemes someone open, if not more than someone, when one or two people open almost every single play. There were every wide open play. guys every running around. And the thing is, I think the biggest thing that makes me feel like, okay, with the whole get a weapon as, as like that's going to be on the on the field week one is the fact that Aaron Rodgers' career average time to throw is a little over two seconds. And last year with 13 different offensive line combinations, we still averaged two and a half seconds of protection. Yeah, yeah there were games that were super porous, and that's what happens when you face stud defensive players like the Miami game and, and Wilkins, and you're asking freaking former UPS driver Newman to block him one-on-one -on -one because for some reason that's smart, or having a broken Dwayne Brown take Micah Parsons one-on-one -on -one. like that's real smart but yeah. Aaron's not going to let that fly he'll he'll adjust protection he'll do that stuff and that's I think totally. the biggest point absolutely and he'll see the guy that's open in front of him yeah Pop, we're not talking down what Papa Yeti you seem a little bit rambunctious tonight I don't know what it is we're not talking we're talking ob objectively this is objective you know I you know we're talking about the pros and cons of a of a player when he's on that's the field he's a stud yeah, he's, he's just an absolute stud. When the he's on the is, field. I mean, you can't take away that he's missed 18 games the past two years and only has one full season. I mean, you can't take that away, and it's a concern. I mean, it is, and supports the idea of bringing in uh, another wide receiver just to make sure, like, like uh, Tico said, if he's not, let's say he's not ready for four weeks, and Gar God forbid Garrett Wilson twists his ankle and he's out for two or three weeks. We're literally looking at Alan Lazard as wide receiver one as it stands now. That's scary. Although I think Conklin would be wide receiver one in that in that in that instance. But uh, Blitz Crew checking in, buddy. Thank you. He says, "Don't see Boyd signing unless he is at least wide receiver two. Same. I hope Ashton is back before the draft. You guys want a slot or outside wide receiver in the draft? Um, well, I mean, that's an interesting thing about." Ashton, I like that too. I don't know if Tyler Boyd, I seem like Tigo agreed. Um, I don't know. He's been wide receiver three for the past couple of years and still managed 67 receptions last year. Uh, I don't know if that's the deal breaker. I would imagine he's probably looking for that, but it's a good point. But I what do you think? Are you looking for a slot or a, or a, or a wide or, or an outside wide receiver in the draft? I would like an X. I would take a slot. The, the The benefit is is that Garrett Wilson can, can play anywhere. But my whole thing is I would love to give Garrett more time in the slot because we have a guy who can play outside. Because Garrett with a free release, because you can't play man, you can't you can't press man on a slot guy because he's so far off the line. Garrett with a free release, whoo, that to me is super scary. And with his ability to cut in and out. Getting him open in the middle of the field, I think, is going to open up his yak and all of the things that you can do. Doing that, uh, what my, what Miami and San Francisco did last year by putting Tyreek Hill in motion before the snap and giving him free releases at full sprint and things like that. I think you're going to see a lot of teams introduce that. And I think putting Garrett in a position where he can operate in the slot a lot would benefit his game immensely. And I'm not trying to say make Garrett your slot. No, I just saying the wide receiver that you get, put him in a place where he can also play the X, where he isn't just a slot guy. So Hunter Renfro isn't necessarily a guy I'm a big fan of because he's a slot only wide receiver, if that makes sense. Whereas in a guy like 
Tyler Boyd, you could argue couldn't play the X. He didn't get a lot of opportunity, but you can argue that, you know, four years ago, he was playing the X a lot. And so that's what I want. I want a guy who can play the X and the slot, but I don't want a, just a slot receiver. I like that too. That's exactly how I see it. Although I will say I am across the board. You guys know I'm a big, ugly kind of guy. I'm a guy four yards wins the game, right? Four yards of play wins the game. And that doesn't mean I don't want bigger plays, but minimum four yards of play. If you do that all day long, wins the game. Your defense is fresh. You always end up in the end zone. The whole thing. You fucking take steal the, the soul of the defense by doing that. So in that respect, I love my six foot two and up wide receivers. I love 200, you know, 200 to 220 pounds. I love guys that are not afraid to block, uh, high Same. point the ball. That's my prototypical wide receiver. That said, I think it's very, very important to have that little shifty motherfucker that's running around in there, finding the gaps in the, you know, the seams in the, in the zone. I, or Make the can first lose. man miss. That's right. Yep. Making the first man miss, lose the primary coverage. I'm, I'm all about that guy too. So right now, even though we have Gibson, you look at Garrett Wilson, you look at Mike Williams, you look at Alan Lazard, you look at Jason Brownlee, the guys that are on the team, it's really Gibson that fills that role. I like Gibson and I will not steal the joy of what he gave us last year. That, that, that week one punt return was a thing of beauty. And he's done some other nice things. So I'm a fan. I support him. But I still don't think that you shouldn't take the opportunity to upgrade. And there are guys in this draft that are instant upgrades at that shifty kind of a guy. Totally uh, right. So that's what I think we're, we need. Just my opinion. And I think that you can get that in the fifth round. Totally. I, like, I think a lot of people are like, Oh, if you take F like, third, if you take one player, you can only take one player of one position in the draft. No, that's absolutely incorrect. Right? Like if we wanted to, you can, you can get multiple tackles in a draft. You can get multiple guards in a draft. I think we should get multiple guards in this draft. If we don't bring somebody back, like a guy like Taj Washington, not, not your favorite Washington in the draft, but a guy like Taj Washington out of USC, you can get him in round four, round five. There he is. I think he's an instant upgrade to Xavier Gibson. And you're talking about small, shifty, just fast as a, like just a firecracker in there is going to find the open space. And you're just like, eh, eh, what are you going to do about it? Make the first man miss. I think a lot of people are sleeping on him because of Brendan Rice. If you haven't, Green Bean, I would recommend it. Go watch some Taj Washington. His I, teammates were saying that he was yeah. the best wide receiver on USC. I love Taj Washington. No, no. Luke McCaffrey is another one out of Rice. 6'1", can play the slot. Love that, not just because of the last name. Um, he's an interesting guy. You can probably get in round four or five. I, I, I would love to that double dipping, you know, and and finding a, finding a, again, in an ideal world, it sucks, but like Xavier Gibson and Jason Brownlee aren't on the roster. In an ideal got world, in, in all fairness and all respect, the truth is that those guys probably shouldn't be on a roster. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. yeah. You could see I mean, that they're getting year. their shot. And if you make good, you make good. That's fine. The same thing was said about Wayne Corbett and many others throughout the NFL, but they, they're, they're the exception, not the rule. Yeah. Uh, Sam Aiken checking in. Thank you, buddy. He says, Jet scouting had a whole year to scout the offensive line. Uh, yeah. All right. We should draft wide receiver. When has A Rod? Had a weapon picked for him. Um, well, when has he had a, a, I don't know. I mean, I, I'd have to go through Green Bay. I mean, I know the kind of the rub there. Green Bay went like nine years in a row taking defense in the first round. Yeah. That said, they would get, you know, receivers in, and in the second round. I mean, they've done well doing that, finding Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams wasn't a first round pick, everybody. Nope. Um, so I don't know. I'm with you, Sam. But I don't, I'm not sure what you're saying with the scouting at a whole year to scout the offensive line is a question. I mean, they had a whole year to scout everybody, you know, so, and they've been doing that, I would imagine. Uh, look, I'm a fan of what Joe Douglas has done in free agency. I want you to know that. And that includes Mike Williams, Tyron Smith, uh, Jonathan Simpson, uh, the trade for Morgan Moses, the trade for Hassan Reddick. 
I liked Kinlaw. Kinlaw was on my list. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, not the guy I would have gone for, but only because of injury stuff. But I, I mean, as far as the skill set and the player, I think it's a slam dunk. I mean, if he needs yeah. to come in for a game, he's going to give you NFL uh, quality, uh, you know, uh, quarterback play, which was already better than what we've been watching for a long time. So I'm a fan of it, but not the guy I would have chosen. But not a, I'm definitely not complaining about it. But I think overall, we've done a very interesting, very nice job in, in free agency. But again, I think there's an opportunity to do a little bit more. And it's going to be interesting. We still have two weeks. And do prices come down? Do we, you know, kind of, do we pull the trigger? We didn't get to our own free agents tonight, Tigo. But on an Ashton no. Davis... You yeah. know, on, on, on a Connor McGovern, some of these guys and kind of shore things up going in the draft. We're free. We're free to do whatever we want. Uh, I would really like that. But with that all said, Tigo, it is nine o'clock, my friend. Um, uh, yeah, Tony says 95% of Green Bay's offense was drafted. That's the thing, dude. Maybe not first round picks. Uh, and, you know, you saw the last crop of wide receivers, the Romeo Dubs is uh, what's his name? Um, Watson. They need a second to kind of get their feet under them. They're not first round. They slide out of the first for a reason. But that said, man, I mean, dude, they've done very, very well with their system. Yeah. Um, they, 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 the, the biggest thing I think that stopped Green Bay is not being able to really figure out and fix the defense. The last time they took a offensive player in round one that wasn't Jordan Love was in 2011. Every yeah. other year. Every other year was an off was a defensive player. The last yep. first round, like again, not including Jordan Love, was Derek Sherrod, offensive tackle, was the last guy they took. Then it went defensive end, defensive end, DB, safety, defensive tackle, cornerback, cornerback, linebacker, Jordan Love, and then DB, linebacker, defensive line. Like they've been trying to fix the defense for so long, yeah. and they haven't been able to manufacture the unit that they want. But you're, you can't fault them for what they've done on offense. They've done yeah, an excellent and Especially job when you have Aaron Rodgers go, look, he's going to carry whoever we bring in there. Mm -hmm. We need to put our prime, you know, our, our premium assets into the defense. Because look, look, the AFC championship games that they lost, dude, it's defense. People say Aaron Rodgers only won and won the Super Bowl. Dude, go back and look at it through a real objective lens. You'll see he throws for 340 and then and, and three touchdowns or whatever it might be. And the defense gave up 240 yards on the ground. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not like he goes into those games and shits to bed. He's still playing Aaron Rodgers football. The defense kind of, for lack of a better word, betrays him, Tigo. But with that all said, guys, we're going to bounce out of here. You're the best. We love you. I want to remind you, dude, guys, we got the draft party coming up. Only a few more days to buy tickets. Only a few tickets left, actually. Uh, I could not be more excited for this one. Three hours of open bar, three hours of all-you-can-eat buffet, crowd cams, and tons of amazing giveaways. We have two sets of Jets tickets. We have the talking, uh, or sorry, the uh, tailgate Joe uh, season pass for free uh, amazing tailgates for the entire Jets season. We're giving away golf clubs. We're giving away uh, pickleball board. I'm not a pickleball. Um, um, cornhole uh, boards. Tons of merch. It's going to be a giveaway every 30 minutes. Now, the people watching the live streams will, you know, only will get some of that, of course. But uh, the people that are there are going to get some exclusive access to that, uh, plus a free or a, a shirt included. Um, guys, it's going to be, I can't wait to hang out with you guys. It's going to be great. Tickets are available on TalkingJets.com or just click the link in the description. Uh, don't forget to hit those there, Milk Thumbs. Subscribe to the channel. And you know what? Jeremy, Jets Chaos himself, is live right now. So if you're looking for more Jets talk, head over there. It's not quite as good as Tigo and I, but Jeremy, you know, he does a good job. Jeremy's all right, that guy. So if you're looking for more Jets talk, you can go over to Jets Chaos on YouTube and check out our boy, see what he's talking about. With that all said, Tigo, thank you for hanging out with me, my friend. And uh, everybody, have a great night. We'll see you next time.